المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا مولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد beloved brothers and sisters in Islam respected علماء حفاظ youth viewers and listeners السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله we are honored to welcome our respected مفتي زكريا مدات to the masjid today into the program to honor us with a short نصيحة إن شاء الله تفضل مشكورة Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wa mursaleen. Nabiina Muhammadi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassiri li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani qaw qawli. Rabbi yassir wa la tu'asir wa tamim bil khair. Honorable ulama, shuyukh, respected elders, brothers, mothers, sisters in Islam. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, we find ourselves almost passing through the first 10 days of Ramadan. And we see our actions from the beginning of Ramadan until this point. Usually when Ramadan starts, we have some goal. What we wish to achieve from this month, we wish to make certain amount of completions of the Quran, certain amount of adhkar, etc. One of the important aspects of all of our ibadah, we know the narration, we've heard this before, Ad-du'a'u mukhul ibadah. Dua is the core, is the essence of worship. So without salah, without tilawat of Quran, without azkar, the dhikr that we make, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, etc. The, one of the most important things for every Muslim is that we must make dua in this month. There's various types of duas. And one of those that is important is the istighfar, seeking Allah Ta'ala's forgiveness. We know the famous narration where Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mounted the mimbar and he took one step and he said, Amin. He took another step, he said, Amin. He took another step, he said, Amin. Sahaba did not know what was this. And one of the steps he took, I'm just saying in brief, that Jibreel Alayhi Salaam appeared before him and he said, Woe to the person who finds the month of Ramadan and is not forgiven in this month of Ramadan. Destruction be to that person. He meets this month. You know, when from Rajab already we were making dua. Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban wa balikhna Ramadan. Allah bless us in Rajab and Sha'ban and take us to Ramadan. Now a person is in Ramadan. We are living. Allah has given us life. The other brothers and sisters, have not, they have not seen this month this year. We also know another narration where the importance of ibadah in this month at a person I, there was two people who passed away and one died a martyr and the other one died a year later. Someone saw in a dream that the person who died a year later entered into Jannah before the martyr. They said, how is this possible? So it was answered that the person that lived one more year, they did not make one year extra salah. They did not fast one extra Ramadan. That shows the virtue and the essence of this month of Ramadan. So we cannot pass this month without having, uh, having sought Allah Ta'ala's forgiveness. So istighfar is only one part of dua. Dua, what is dua? One is salah, you make salah, and that is a prayer. It is a set formula of how you worship Allah. Dua is your supplication. A supplication is made seeking something from the Creator. You can make a dua with your hands raised, and you can make dua with your hands not raised. For example, if a person is in the maqbara, is in the graveyard, he can raise his hands, and he can also not raise his hands. A person makes dua after salah, he can raise his hands. Or for example, a person is going to bed and he recites the masnoon duas, his hands is not raised, he's laying on his side and he's making dua. So dua can be made with the hands raised, dua can also be made with the hands not raised. How do we make dua? Dua is made where the hands are lifted up towards the sama. We do not keep our hands closed like this, like the nasara. We keep our hands open. As the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the palms facing towards the sama, and the hands in line with the chest. And this is how we supplicate. In certain circumstances you find, or in the narration you find, the Nabi lifted his hands higher. For example, in the time of Badr, 
and I'll come to that inshallah when when du'as are very quickly mustajab and accepted by Allah is when he raised his hands higher you can raise your hands it's permissible to raise your hands higher to the sama if you are begging if you're pleading from Allah you raise your hands higher now when we ask from Allah this is the important part we're coming to the actual dua how do we ask from Allah Rabbul Izza? you're speaking to your creator the, the, the being who made you if it was not for Allah we would not have had these eyes in our head we would not have had these ears on our head each person sitting here, each person listening, our form and shape was already determined by Allah Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala chose your physique and your appearance and your features. That's why when we look in the mirror, we say, Allah, anta hasanta khalqi. Allah, you made my appearance beautiful. Whether a person is actually looking beautiful to another person or not, he say the same dua. So whether a person look nice to someone else or not, when he looks in the mirror, Allahumma anta hasanta khalqi. Allah, you made my face, you made my appearance beautiful. Fahassin khuluqi. Allah, make my character beautiful. So when Allah made you, you already, as you are, you already beautiful as you are. You might not see your beauty. The person next to you might not see your beauty. Allah Ta'ala sees your beauty. Allah chose to make you the way you look. Say, Alhamdulillah. Yeah, don't be ungrateful. Allah chose you to look a certain way. Allah chose you to have a certain way. Say, Alhamdulillah. Allah made me like this, I'm happy. Uh, whatever the condition, Alhamdulillah. The greatest dua is Alhamdulillah. Now, we ask from Allah, what are we going to ask from Allah? This is our creator, our sustainer. The one who feeds us. The one who clothes us. We don't understand. We think we work in a, in a job. We have a business. Money comes in. Alhamdulillah, I feed my family. We are only the vessel and the means to feed our family. It is not us who feed our family. وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ خَشَّةَ إِمْلَاقِ Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, don't kill your children of fear of poverty. نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكُمْ وَإِيَّاهُمْ Allah says, we sustain you and we sustain them. You don't sustain them. I am sustaining. When you have more children, Allah will make a means that your risk increase so that you can take care of their children. You think, mashallah, I got a promotion, mashallah, I got a business, uh, you know, it went up. It went up because Allah Ta'ala knew you had the extra responsibility. So Allah Ta'ala increase your risk so that you can fulfill your responsibility. It is not our efforts and we think it's only our efforts. It's because of me that I've reached this. Because of me that I've done this. No. It is because Allah Ta'ala wanted it like that and that's why I'm grateful. When it comes, Alhamdulillah. If it wasn't for Allah, there would have been a problem on a problem. Or hospital bill after hospital bill. A car problem after a car problem. Then where's all your money? Now you're going to look after your children. But Allah make it such. Even your tests that come, it comes in its portions. Allah is not going to put all your all the tests that you wanted for your whole life to just fall on you at once. Allah Ta'ala proportionate. This is going to happen in this part of your life. This will happen in this part. Then you're going to go up here and then you're going to face some loss here. Then you're going to go up here, you're going to face some loss here. It's Allah Ta'ala's system. Trust Allah Ta'ala's system. Put your full tawakkul in Allah. Coming back to the dua. How do we make dua? We spoke about the hands, the posture. We look down in our hands. And we take a perfect example. When you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, never ever limit yourself. You are speaking to the creator of the universe. The Allah who created the earth and all the planets in the sama. You cannot limit the creator. When you're asking from Allah, don't ask small. Don't ask something small and think, oh my, my du'as becoming too much. Nothing is too much for Allah. Listen from the Quran. Allah Ta'ala shows us beautifully how to make dua from the story of Zakaria alayhi salam. Zakaria alayhi salam, he took care of Sayyidina Maryam when she was a child, the mother of Nabi Isa alayhi salam. It comes in the Quran. The mother of Nabi Isa, Maryam alayhi salam, when she was still small, Zakaria alayhi salam cared for her. He had a special room in the mihrab for her. Mihrab, we say this is a mihrab. So a special room he had for her. Nobody came into the mihrab except Zakaria alayhi salam, the Prophet of Allah. Comes in a hadith that Zakaria was in a jar. He was a carpenter. He didn't have a lot of risk. He didn't have maybe abundance. He was a carpenter. He did work with his hands. He took care of Sayyidina Maryam alayhi salam. One day, he comes in the room. We know the famous qissa. And what does he see by her? There is food by her. 
He says, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Ya Maryam, Anna Laki Hada, Anna Laki Hada, Maryam, where did this come from? Qalat, Huwa Min Indillah, It came from Allah. Inna Allah Yarzuku Man Yashau Bi Ghayri Hisab. Allah Ta'ala sustains whoever He wants without accountability. Allah Ta'ala gives a person rizq from where he cannot imagine. Hunalika Da'a Zakariya Rabbah. Zakariya alayhi salam looks at this and he thinks, Subhanallah, this girl is so pious. Allah Ta'ala is feeding her in the mihrab. Nobody comes in here. This food is divine. If Allah Ta'ala can feed Maryam alayhi salam, Allah can give me what I'm also desiring. And we know the historians tell us Zakariya alayhi salam was a very old age. About a hundred years old already. And his wife was barren. She could no longer have children. She was also very old. Zakariya alayhi salam sees this and he makes dua to Allah Ta'ala, a Nabi of Allah. We think sometimes we must only ask Allah what is what in logical means. Zakariya alayhi salam asks Allah something beyond the logical means. Allah Ta'ala tells us in Surah Maryam, A'udhu Bilaam Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Kaf ha ya ayin saad, ذكر رحمة ربك عبده زكريا إذ نادى ربه نداء خفيا قال رب إني وهن العظم مني واشتعل الرأس شيبا ولم أكن بدعائك رب شقيا زكريا عليه السلام الله تعالى تعزز remember زكريا عليه السلام إذ نادى ربه نداء خفيا he asked Allah, he made dua to Allah, quietly, khafiyya, quietly. You can make a loud dua, you can make a soft dua. Zakariya alayhi salam called Allah softly. What did he say to Allah when he lifted his hands? He said, <clears throat> that Allah, inni wahan al-azmu minni, Allah, my bones have become weak. And this is how we also, when we really want to ask Allah for something, First, we show your humility before Allah. You show your own weakness. You say, Allah, I've committed so much sin in my life. Uh, Allah Ta'ala, I've done so much wrong. Every time I did wrong, Allah, you were there for me. Allah, you listened to me. Allah, I was doing wrong and you still sustained me. I was committing sin, but you still covered my sin for me. Uh, if people had to know the sin I did, why will people look at me? Allah, was you so kind. You show first your weakness. Zakariya alayhi salam saying, Allah, my bones have become weak, Allah. Washta'ala ra'asu shayba, Allah, my hair has become white, Allah. In other words, I'm old. Walam akum bi du'ai ka rabbi shakiya, but Allah never, whenever I made du'a to you, never was I despondent in my du'a. I always know when I ask Allah, you come through for me. What did he ask Allah after that? He tells Allah also the reason why he's asking. وَإِنِّي خِفْتُ مَوَالِيَ مِنْ وَرَائِي وَكَانَتِ مْرَاتِ عَاقِرًا فَهَبْ لِهِ مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيًّا He said, Allah, nobody, I don't feel, and he was the imam of his people. Allah, there's nobody that can take my place after me. And my wife can't have children, Allah. He's showing all his weakness. My wife can't have children. I'm in such a position, I'm old now, Allah. And I can't have children. And I don't see a fit imam to take my place. يَرِثُنِي وَيَرِثُ مِنْ آلِ يَعْقُوبِ وَجَعَلْهُ رَبِّ رَضِيَّا Allah, somebody, a child that can take from me, inherit, not inherit money, inherit what I inherited from Ya'qub, the knowledge, the Torah. يَرِثُنِي وَيَرِثُ مِنْ آلِ يَعْقُوبِ Inherit me and inherit from the family of Ya'qub a.s. This knowledge of Allah. In the third Jews, Allah Ta'ala says, He asks Allah, رَبِّ هَبْ لِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ ذُرِّيَّةً طَيِّبَةً إِنَّكَ سَمِيعُ الدُّعَاءِ Allah bless me with a righteous child. Allah, you hear my dua, Allah. You hear my dua, Allah. And then Allah Ta'ala says, إِنَّا نُبَشِّرُكَ بِغُلَامِ نِسْمُهُ يَحْيَا لَمْ نَجْعَلْ لَهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ سَمِيَا Zakariya, we're going to give you a son whose name is Yahya. Nobody before this child was named Yahya before. Zakariya alayhi salam was surprised. He said, Ya Allah, how? Allah, I know you're going to give me. But I'm so old and my wife is barren. Allah Ta'ala says, قَدَ خَلَقْتُكَ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَلَمْ تَكُ شَيْئًا 
Zakaria, I made you before when you were nothing. For me to make a child for you is also nothing. It's easy. It's easy. I can give you a child. Against means, Zakaria is asking something from Allah that is against logical means. But he asked Allah because he know it only comes from Allah. Everything comes from Allah. Allah blesses him with the child, subhanAllah, who becomes a Nabi. Nabi Yahya alayhi salam, a great Nabi of Allah. The point is we must draw from Allah Ta'ala's treasure. Now, I know I'm talking long. I'll try to keep it short, inshallah. When do we make dua? When is the time we make dua? The time we make dua, there's Mubarak times to make dua. You can make dua anytime as you're walking, as you're sitting. You can remember Allah, you can speak to Allah, you can ask from Allah. But there are certain times that it is blessed to make dua. For example, Dubra uh, Maktubat, after the Farad Salah. When you make your Farad Salah, some scholars say it is at the end before you make Salam. And some say after you make the Salam, you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you get up in the middle of the night, there's a portion of the night where Allah ta'ala he descends to the first Sama every night. He asks, who is there? He will ask from me. I will give to him. Call me, I will answer you. I will answer you. Allah comes to the first time. He says, who is there who seeks forgiveness? That I will forgive him. Every night. Not Ramadan. Every night. That is the moment when you get up. Even tahajjud time. Even if your body is sore. Even if you are tired and you cannot even get out of your bed. Lay on your bed. And turn your focus to Allah. Turn your attention to Allah. Say in your bed, in the warmth of your bed. Ya Allah, forgive me Allah. Allah, bless me Allah. Allah, you know I'm tired. Allah, you know my body is so Allah. You know, I, it's difficult for me to get up. But Allah, in my position, in my weakness, Allah, forgive me. Subhanallah. Allah Ta'ala will never deprive you. That is also another thought. When a person makes dua, you must have that conviction that Allah Ta'ala will answer me. Yaqeen, you must have yaqeen. Allah is going to forgive me. You must never have a doubt. Will Allah, will Allah not? No, Allah will. Allah Ta'ala sustains the people every day. The people who are non-Muslim, the people who are kuffar, they disobey Allah. They love their nights in khamr and zina. Uh, they spend their nights in gambling, alcohol. And Allah Ta'ala still feeds them. They drive the best of cars, they have the best of houses. Subhanallah, me and you, the ummah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The ummah of the Nabi, of the best Nabi. The final messenger of Allah, we are the ummah. You think if you... Believe in Allah. You worship Allah. You think when you pick up your hands and you say, Allah, grant me. You think Allah will not give you? Hmm? Allah says in the hadith of Qudsi, I am to my slave as you think of me. I am to my slave as you think of me. When you think good of Allah, Allah is going to come through for you like you think of Allah. That's why I say, never limit Allah. Coming back to my point, when is Mubarak times to make dua? Time of tahajjud, the time during the night. When we are fasting, three du'as are mustajab by Allah. A man who is traveling in the path of Allah is on journey. He's going for some good purpose. He's traveling his du'as mustajab. A du'a for the father, for his child, or against his child. That's why a parent must also be very careful how they use their words towards their child. A du'a of the father or the mother is mustajab. How do we draw this extraction of the mother? Because in another hadith, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, your mother, your mother, your mother, then your father. So in the absence of the father, subhanAllah, the mother's dua is also just as mustajab. When a person, a parent, make dua for the child, inshallah, the child will benefit from that dua. And in like manner, if the child disappoint that parent, and that parent must curse that child, that's why it comes in a hadith, you must never say bad, because it can be at that time when Allah is accepting duas. Never curse your child. Rather make a good dua. Even though you see a quality in your child you don't like now, Still make a good dua. Even if you don't see it happening. That's another thing that we must understand. When we make dua, we expect something must immediately come now from the sky. We're fasting now, so Allah Ta'ala must just answer now. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that your dua is accepted as long as you don't do three things. You must not ask for sin. Don't ask for something that is sinful. Don't make dua for severing the ties of kinship. Don't sever the ties of kinship. The one thing he said was, don't sever the ties of kinship. The other thing was, don't ask for sin. And the last thing was, Subhanallah, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. It's not coming to my mind. It'll slip my mind. Inshallah, it will come just now. Nevertheless, 
Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Oh yes, Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you must not be hasty." So Sahaba said, "Ya Rasulullah, what is hasty?" He said, "A person makes dua and he said, 'I made dua and I made dua and Allah didn't answer my dua." Subhanallah, Allah brought it to my memory. Allah Akbar. I made dua and I made dua and Allah didn't answer my dua. Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Don't say that." In other words, continue making dua. No matter how long your dua will take, make that dua. Months come, years come. Continue making dua to Allah. Another time, dua is mustajab when it is raining. The time of dua when it is raining, it is mustajab. Another time of dua is accepted when a person is in sujood. Another time of dua is accepted when the call to adhan is made. The dua between adhan and iqama is readily accepted, quickly accepted. Another narration state by Sahih ibn Sa'd radiallahu anhu. He said also just before battle. When the Muslims are in the sufuf and they're about to face the enemy of Allah, at that moment, as they're standing there, ready to engage in battle, at that moment when they make dua, the dua is mustajab. We find this in Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the Battle of Badr. I said I was going to touch on it later. When Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa fought in Badr and the battle became intense, he made dua to Allah. What dua did he make? He didn't make dua for himself and his family. Allahumma in tuhlak hadhi al-isaba la tu'bad. Allah, if this group of Muslims today must die, Allah, there'll be nobody left to worship you, Allah. Allah, if this group of Muslims here today on Badr must die, Allah, nobody's going to be left here to worship you. What did Allah do from the sama? Abu Bakr al came, said, Abu Bakr came, he put his shawl. The Nabi lifted his hands. The Abu Bakr came, he put his shawl back on the Nabi. Allah heard you. He looked at Abu Sayyid Abu Bakr and he smiled. He said, Abu Bakr, I see Jibreel coming on his horse. Jibreel coming from the Sama in his armor. Allah heard the dua of the Nabi in the Sama. Allah tells Jibreel, Jibreel, take angels, go down. Take angels, go down and fight with Muhammad Sallallahu against the enemy. Allahu Akbar. We come to an authentic hadith where Jibreel is having a conversation, a conversation with the Nabi. Who is the base of the Sahaba? Who is the base of the Sahaba? The Badriyin Sahaba. Jibreel Alayhi Salaam say, he said, the same with us in the Sama. The greatest angels in the Sama are those who came worth to fight in Badr. Allah Akbar. Hadith. Allah, the dua of the Nabi in the Sama. When you are ready for battle, when you are facing the Kufar, at that perfect, at that important moment, that's the time you turn your attention to Allah. In short, Maaf, I've always spoken my, my time with Allah Ta'ala. Please, may Allah Ta'ala accept from all of us, inshallah. Uh, remember this, I started with this ayat, I forgot to read this ayat. When my servant asks about me, فَإِنِّي قَرِيب, I am close to him. We don't see how dua is being answered. Allah say, I am close, إِنِّي قَرِيب. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِي. Ask Allah, Allah is going to respond, you don't see it happening. You might not see it now, there's three ways your dua is accepted. Maaf, let me just mention this. Allah Ta'ala gives a man immediately what he asks for. The second thing is Allah reserves his dua and Allah gives that dua for him in the akhirah. Or Allah Ta'ala, by means of that dua that he asks Allah, Allah will avert some difficulty that was about to afflict him. Allah Ta'ala will avert that difficulty. That's why you are never a loser when you make dua. You can never lose when you're asking Allah. Ask Allah. Ask Allah everything you want. Another way your du'as are accepted. I forgot to mention this also. Mark me, my time is now. Another thing for your du'as to be mustajab. Any person, any person who's listening, any person can be mustajab with du'a. Any person can have your du'as accepted by Allah. How? One is, you must be very particular on how you earn your money and how and what food you purchase. Your earnings must be halal and you must purchase halal. Your earnings must be halal and you must dress halal. If a person do this, his du'as will be mustajab by Allah Ta'ala. If he's abstained from sin, if he abstained from sin and his earning is halal and then he picks his hand up to Allah, his, his du'a will be accepted. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a hadith, there's a man who comes, he's on a journey. Uh, he's looking very uh, disheveled, his hair's disheveled. He's full of dust. He's not in a good condition. In other words, in that condition, his du'a is supposed to be quickly accepted by Allah. And he's calling to Allah, he's saying, Rabbi, Rabbi, my Lord, my Lord. And Allah is not responding. The Nabi said, because he eats haram, his food is haram. Huh? He drinks haram. His clothing is haram. 
Otherwise, he purchased the money with maybe haram money. How can his dua be accepted by Allah? So if you want your dua to be mustajab, make sure we abstain from sin and that we earn halal and we purchase halal. In that way, our du'as will be mustajab by Allah Ta'ala. A person must be very careful what he puts inside his body. Uh, sometimes you see someone say, for example, no, you can drink this as, for example, only 2% alcohol. Huh? That's fine. You don't get drunk. Wallahi, it is haram. Huh? It is najis. Alcohol is najis. If somebody takes a glass of alcohol and throw it on you, you must go wash your clothes. Najasa tegalida. It is impure. Majority of scholars will tell you it is impure. How do you take something impure and say, I drink a little bit, it don't make me intoxicated, I'll drink it. It is haram. What is haram in a lot is haram in a little. If someone took a drop of pee and put it in your milk or your tea, or took a drop of blood and put it in your tea, will you just say, it's just a drop, I'll drink it. You'll say, no, this is full. There's nudges inside here. So how do you take nudges and put it inside your body? And the narration said, Nabi Sallallahu said, the curse, the person who drinks khamar, huh? that person is cursed. The person who drinks the khamar, the person who squeezes the grapes for khamar, the person who carries the khamar, the person who is carrying the khamar too, the person who pours the khamar, the person who drinks the khamar, all of them, all of them. So how? Oh, how you drink little and you say, no, this don't intoxicate me. It's haram. Even the person that squeezes the grapes for khamar is haram. How oh, a person that drinks the khamar cannot be haram. Anyways, Maaf, I've overspoken my time. May Allah Ta'ala accept our du'as, inshallah. May we ask Allah sincerely from our hearts and make our du'as. May Allah accept all of our du'as. Our good du'as that we make, our, our du'as that are made for us, inshallah, that are good for us. May Allah Ta'ala accept all of us, forgive all of us, and grant us to have a special rahmah and maghfirah. And leave this month having attained that taqwa that Allah has spoken about in the Quran. Kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun. That's why we, we are fasting. So that we can attain the taqwa. May Allah Ta'ala grant us to leave this month with that taqwa, inshallah. Subhanallah, bihamdi. Subhanakallah, bihamdi. Kashidu Allah, ilaha 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 il